You're listening to XS Manchester, and uh, it's a pleasure to introduce or well, welcome to the studio a young chap that I've known for a long time, not seen him for a few years. Uh, but Miles Kane, back in the room, how are you? Hey, thank you. It's nice to see you again. You're looking man. very dapper as, as hey, usual. Thank oh, you. I love the red leather jacket there. Cheers. Uh, you've always been a bit smart, haven't you, with your kit? You? Well, you know, it's you. You can talk as well. You know, we like. I, like, I love me clothes, yeah. don't I? You know, I think, as, I think, as you do. You know, it's it's something there. It becomes like an uh, addiction, doesn't it? You know. Yeah, I think it's part of. I don't know what it is, but as I get older, I get worse for it. Yeah. It's constantly Tell me getting, about it. Yeah. yeah. And I, I can't come out in tracky bottoms. I know. You know what I mean, I love them on the sofa though. Yeah, yeah. they're great on the sofa. <laughs> aren't they? Yeah, yeah. Putting bins out. And all <laughs> Man, you're even putting bins out to people. Hey, boom now, nah, mate. You know, coming past that. So, in fact, the other day I went out to, I nipped out to Tesco for something. I can't remember what it was. But I thought I'll go in incognito to put a baseball hat on and sunglasses. Whoa, and the baseball scruffy jacket. Wow. And I got spotted right away. Yeah. Boom now, nah, mate. Hey. Yeah. yeah. You're rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> so, album number three's just come out. It came out last week. Coup de Gras. Yes. What a brilliant result. I bet you're chuffed with that album. I am. Uh, yeah, I've been overwhelmed one. by how yeah. it's all gone, man. Yeah. You know, um, it's felt it's felt really positive and it's been it's been exciting to be back out there doing it and you know playing these tunes live and and the whole the whole thing of it it just feels uh, I've been really enjoying it. Yeah. Know? Yeah. And it, the 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 route that that journey in general you've been solo artist now for eight years, always working with other musicians. Obviously, yeah. but are you in? Is it getting better and better? Is it getting more exciting with every record? Uh, touch woods. Don't want to jinx it, but it does. You know, dare I say it? It it does everything. I'm just yeah. I'm loving. I'm loving it all. What's been minute. the best bit so far? Oh, I think. Uh, I think doing finishing this record and then having the time to reflect on it and uh, I think someone's doing these interviews and looking back on it and knowing um, you know lots of songs got written for this record and it was a bit of a roller coaster you know right. uh, you know what it's like and uh, looking back now with time and, and I wouldn't have changed it for anything because I, f- I, I feel so confident in how strong it is and from going out there and delivering them live and People are still sort of getting used to them, but I can see that they're starting to connect and uh, it, it feels good, you know. Yeah. Mm. You're good at turning out these, like, infectious pop tunes that always sound brilliant on the radio. That's one thing you, you, you're brilliant at. Thank do you, you. Do you ever struggle to write? Do you ever get writer's block? I, do, you, do you ever sit there thinking, I, oh, I've done loads and I definitely got it uh, after I started writing this record uh, when I finished my second uh, solo album. And then we went into doing another Puppets record sort of a year after or two years after that. Yeah. So when I went back to those old songs after that Puppets tour and stuff, uh, they just didn't seem feel right. Um, I, I, I don't know what it was. I think it was just maybe it was two years on. I changed as well. Me, I, You know what I mean? I felt different. And uh, so I started again after that tour and then got off to a good start. Uh, that's where I wrote Coup de Gras and Silver Scream, which is a real sort of punky one. Yeah. And then I did get a bit of a block and, uh, you know, the, all this self-questioning and all that gear. Yeah. Um, but then it was when me and Jamie T, he was over in LA last January and we planned to um, sort of have a week together to, I've known Jamie for like 10 years, just to sort of hang out. And uh, I was playing him all my demos that I had and he was yeah. getting really turned on by coup de gras and silver screen he's like what's your pro he's like this is what you should be doing yeah and then me and him started we sat down with the acoustic and we had this amazing week and it really kick-started it all again for me and uh that was where and then from then on everything that was getting written mainly with me and him uh it 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 was like um Miles better than anything that I'd done previous for, for on the writing aspect for that'd be a good name for an album that which Miles better than anything I've done previously. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> you got the next album. That. Sorry, go on. Uh, yeah, no. So and then that was it. So just like last year, we just homed in me and Jay and yeah. the Vava Voom got uh, came back and it was uh, it was enjoyable and it you know it's. Uh, they they mean so much to me these tunes. They they we we dug deep on on the lyrics. Um, from what I was going through at that time, and uh, it it feels like a release, you know, and it, and uh, I, I I'm sort of grateful for that that it it came out, you know. Yeah. I hear the uh, on the track wrong side of life. I got a proper John Lennon vibe. I, that's probably my favourite. It's absolutely and channeling the spirit of Lennon. Yeah, that. Uh, that that tune is the actual demo that me and Jamie just did is in it? his room. It's- because I tried re-recording it when I was yeah. over in LA with the, the band and John Congleton, the producer, but yeah. 
I just couldn't. You know, I don't know, there was just something on that demo and everyone I played it to me, mate, it's like, oh, that's got something special. I think because my vocal, it's so ripping on oh, it. Yeah, and it's totally. almost, it's too high for me, the key. Yeah. Uh, I've had to bring it down for oh, when really? we play it live because it's, it's so full on. But it was something we were just writing, as we were writing, we were demoing it, doing yeah. the verse. And it, it's got something magical, that song. I, I absolutely love that one. And the you opening know? 45 seconds or so, it's like just, I've not, not heard a record like it, because it just keeps stopping and really yeah, jerky. Song. Yeah, it, it's like the that ultimate thing of, you know, you're, you, you're crying out and it's all, your heart's on your sleeve on that one, you know. Yeah, amazing. Good tune. And then uh, The Clash, I've got a big Clash vibe on uh, Coup de Grace, mm -hmm. Coupe de Grasse. Yeah, it's very clashy, that, isn't it? It's definitely got that when they were entering that uh, disco y, yeah, punky yeah, yeah, yeah. thing. Yeah, that was a thing that we were trying to write for a long time, right. actually. You know, and did you like when you with the track like that? Did you sit down and think, I'm got, I want to make this clashy, or did you just look around and say, Oh, it's a bit clashy, this one, isn't it? Um, no, I think I was trying to write it cl a clashy one for a while. Yeah, <laughs> and what about <laughs> crying my guitar with that? Because everybody's saying I picked up on it right away. Oh, it's T Rex, T Rex, Mark yeah, Hall, and that was just wanted to make a glam rock stomp, and it just yeah. started with a real. Uh, obvious space, dum 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 dum, and then we just like you know wrote cool lyrics and melody over the top to yeah. try and give it a bit of uniqueness. But yeah, it's definitely influenced by T Rex. And I love T Rex. I love them as well. I love I love all these things we're talking about. Yeah, yeah I know, isn't it? I, I guess I do wear my influence on my sleeve, but I'm not afraid to say that. You I think know? It's brilliant. As well as a solo artist, you've not got somebody like you've not got somebody saying no. You can't. Like, when you're in a band, obviously it's more of a compromise, more of a, um, a democracy. But yeah. to be able to just say, I'm going to have a T-Rex track, I'm going to have a Clash track, I'm going to have a Lennon track. I guess that's, I mean, <laughs> dare I even put myself in, in the same bracket, but, you know, that's just what I listened to, and I was definitely listening to all that, and the damned and cramps oh, and yeah. stuff like that, you know. Yeah. Uh, I was definitely listening to, like, hammering that home every day just to try and sort of uh, hopefully get inspired by it. You yeah. Know? And throughout it all, though, whatever the, the vibe, or whatever the influence is, you've always got that, that common denominator with everything that you've ever done, that that really distinctive 50s inspired guitar. You are the king of the riff. I said this last week when you you popped in. It's like every single song's just got riftastic, isn't it? Thank you. Riff City. Yeah, it's... Um... <laughs> Riff.com. <laughs> <laughs> we are Riff. Riff's are us. <laughs> riff well, you forever. Know, it's, it's, yeah, Riff forever, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, is that... Um, I mean, we had this chat briefly last week on XS, but uh, the 50s guitar it's music... Just, well, yeah, I'm like, I'm so not a good guitarist, but I just know... I just... Uh, I, it's like I'm very limited with what I can do, but I mean, without a whammy bar, I'd be lost. You know what I mean? It's just become part of. I can't really rip on an Alecky without the whammy. It's just become part of my yeah. playing and style now. Do you know what I mean? It's uh, and I just love those simple little riffs. Yeah. You know, um, they're only all of them have only got about three notes in them. It's just. You know what yeah. it is? Well, that, that's the spirit of punk, isn't it? I mean, I found that myself. That yeah. obviously being a keyboard player, people are like me. Oh, you're the best keyboard player. I'm not. I'm. I'm. I'm, I'm gash at being a keyboard. Yeah. Player. But because of punk, I can play a little bit of keys, and people think I'm. You know, but it's exactly Rick, like me. Yeah. The new Rick Wayman, which I know I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> I can only play in spiral songs, and in fact, I can only. I probably can't play half of them. I've forgotten them. But mm. um, yeah, it's the spirit of punk, isn't it? Just yes. To, Three fingers will do, won't they? Exactly, you know, man. One. I'm just, <laughs> yeah, one, yeah, one yeah. string and one finger. That's my um, my the, riff. There is actually a tune on there that's got an organ on it. Is it Wrong Side of Life? You've got a two-note organ part going through it. I think it is. It or could is it, be. Or is and, it Cold Light of the Day? The Cold Light of the Day is the one, one that's yeah. a bit of you. It goes down, 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 down. I heard it. I thought I could have yeah. done that. It didn't yeah, even fool me. That's a bit of you. Well, <laughs> next gig, get Next clean. gig, get me on, will you? I need to make some more records. Uh, we've talked about your guitar sound. Let's talk about this video for the new single because uh, I got a shock when I saw it because um, beautifully photographed black and white video, action video, and it's Miles. It's you getting leathered by this bloke for like three or four minutes. <laughs> well, But it's not just an actor, is it? It's no, it, so I'm a big fan of wrestling. I, I never grew out of it as a kid and it's something... Uh, why have I never heard that before that you were into all that stuff? Yeah, I don't know why. I, th I have mentioned it before, right. I guess just not to the extent that I am <laughs> yeah, now. Yeah. But um, no one picked up on it, I don't think. But uh, it, anyway, it's one of them things and we be I became friends with this wrestler who's in the WWE about four years ago. We had a mutual... Uh, he's really into music and, we had, and I'm a fan of his and we became friends and yeah. then we always like you know joked about uh, or talked about doing something together creatively and uh you know like coup de gras was all inspired by him in a way it's like his finishing maneuver and it means the final blow of the death and that's where i got f f uh, learned about it really and put it into that clash disco -y tune. right yeah and um 
and so yeah, it was. It, we were talk, we talked about doing this video together, and it would be like, uh, and the guy who did it, Brooke, over in LA, he was a great director. Was like, yeah, let's make it like a James Bond or like a Bourne film, and like I'm on the run, and you get, I get beaten up, and yeah. you know, it's like he's sort of after me, and uh, and we did it, and it was a great, it was it was so much fun. I was black and blue after it, Imagine. but I loved it. I was in my element, you yeah. know, getting like uh, thrown about body. by one of your icons. <laughs> yeah, it sounds it sounds kinky, but it was amazing to get body slammed and you know beat up. I I had a great day. It was amazing. Like. I didn't realise you already knew him because I thought somebody at the record company had to make that cold call. Like we've got this uh, British rock and roller who wants. Uh, Finn to throw him about and kick shit out of him for a, for a day while we film it. You know what I mean? What do you think? Yeah, no, it you came know. from me. It just it's from me and him basically. You know I mean, what I mean? Yeah, it it, it was all uh, yeah, it was one of them. Check it out. That's the video for "Cry on My Guitar." And uh, talking about icons, uh, you got to work with uh, another friend of mine, a fellow, an icon of mine as well, Paul Weller. Uh, a couple of years, we've done quite a lot with him. Love now, Paul, and he? Um, yeah, he came when we played Brighton about a month ago. He came down and we played. Um, we played this song that we wrote together for my second record called You're Gonna Get It. Yeah. And we also did a cover of T-Rex, Get It On, Yeah, at that gig. And um, I, I love Paul, man. I, I can, can't speak highly enough of him. Uh, and we've become really good friends. And I, I, I've just got so much, you know, he's what I aspire to be. And it, it, he's just such a nice guy that he sort of took me under his wing. And, mm. and it feels really, I can't speak highly enough of him. He, he is dead down to earth. Yeah, he? just, uh, he's, he's such a lovely fella, you know. But but icons don't get much more iconic than him, do they? In, in our world, they, they are the, the big fellas. Aren't they? But when, yeah. you, when you meet them and they are proper nice human beings as well, it's even better. I know, and he's just still getting his turned on making music and oh, excited yeah. by it. And, he, you know, he loves new music as well. Yeah. It's just... And he's just an aspiring yeah. guy. Every know. time I ask him about new music that he's listening to, he's, he's always he rattles off all these oh, bands and artists I've not heard of. Yeah, it. he's way up, probably yeah. above me and you. Like, yeah, yeah he knows he's, he's it's incredible. Yeah. What, he, what he's, uh, he's he's on the ball. Absolutely. What about the new Coral album? Have you had love it. It's great, isn't it? Yeah, I asked you that because you were you, you were label mates, weren't you? Well, back they're in the my Rascals. cousins. Oh, they really? James and Ian. Oh, they're they're singer and drummer are my cousins. I'm learning a lot about yeah. Miles Kane today. <laughs> is, so, that, is that public knowledge as well? Then? Yeah, that is. Yeah, me, uh, my mum and their dad, are brother and sister. Yeah, that's uh, amazing, isn't it? And it's amazing. We spoke to him the other day yeah. uh, that we released this rec- our records on the same day. Right. And uh, I love their album, man. It's gorgeous, I think it's isn't really it? great. Yeah. So it's uh, it's a good time in the, yeah. in the family, you know. They're brilliant as well, they're nice people. And uh, yeah. what about the new Arctic Monkeys album? Have you had a chance to digest that yet? I did. Well, I could see that along. I could see that coming for yeah. for a while, mate. You mean stylistically? You stylistically, mean because, yeah. yeah. Well, maybe I think it, I think it starts from you know working with Alan our puppet second record. I think there's elements on his writing on that on songs like everything you've come to expect. Yeah. The slow <laughs> title track off that record was where he was sort of getting into all them sort of jazzy chords and yeah. experimenting down that road and you know on that record like when we were doing like the Bad Habit song where I'm sort of screaming on that I think that was the start of my journey to get to where I am yeah. on this one do you know yeah. what I mean so um, it is a pro- the, I think that the Arctic Monkeys album is it's, it's equal parts jazz and psychedelia isn't it yeah. I was listening to Knee Socks today when I was driving in they were playing it on XS and you just imagine even knee socks slow it down enough and it'll sound like something off the new album. Yeah, so, and so they've, they've not departed too far yeah, from what they've done. It's not really, yeah. Just yeah. a slower version and a bit more wacky. Yeah. <laughs> wacky, wacky. <laughs> and uh, you're off on tour during the UK. You've got two nights in Manchester at the Academy. Yeah, I can't you're wait. Popular, man. aren't you? I love it. I can't wait. Friday 23rd, which is sold out. Saturday 24th, still some tickets on, yeah. on sale for that. Now, is that two and a half thousand capacity these days? I think so, yeah. 5,000 people want to see this fella in Manchester. I know, I'm, I'm honoured. You I know, know Manchester's always been great for me. Yeah. I, I got to say, thanks for the love. You know, from day one, even Flames, Rascals. Oh, it's, yeah, yeah. it's always been uh, exciting gigs, you know what yeah. I mean, wherever we've played. First yeah. time I met you, you were in the Rascals and you came to see me for uh, XFM and we give you cakes. I'll give you cakes that my wife had made. Do you remember that? Oh, amazing. Brought some cakes and yeah. play. Um, so you're going to be doing as well the Glasgow gig, which is... Oh, is why it... aren't having a got them? Where are they today, man? <laughs> hey, tell you what. I forgot, man. I was in a rush. Hey. <laughs> I've, got, I've, got, I've got half a wrap over here <laughs> from shop down the road. Um, yeah, so you're opening your tour, though, a, a, a venue in Glasgow, which I talk about it a lot because it's, you know, whenever it came up as a question in the Inspirals world, what's your favourite venue to play? Mm. Uh, we'd always say Barrowlands in Glasgow. Uh, last week I was hosting the James question answer thing at HMV. And they got asked by their audience, what's the best venue you've ever played? 
and they said, right away, Barrelons. Do you have the same memories of Barrelons as the venue? It's incredible. Do you know, yeah, it's one of them, isn't it? It's like, uh, it's just, well, it's just like a room. It's like the Academy here or something, isn't it? But it's like, uh, it's it's just got a, it's just got a vibe, hasn't it? Yeah. I can't explain it. It's unusual. No matter what night of the week it is, yeah. it just goes off. I think a big part of it is the link between our part of the world, Manchester and Liverpool. There's a big connection between those cities and Glasgow anyway. Uh, work, yeah. Working class towns have not, yeah. not always had it easy. Exactly. I think all three of them, it's, it's like a triangle in a yeah, weird totally, way, yeah. isn't it? And it's like uh, we're, all, we're all from the same boat. Yeah. If, from the same whatever. I think we're all know. cut from the same chunk of wood, aren't there we? There we go. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm looking for, yeah. <laughs> I've always said that about us and the Scousers, though. We're not that much different. We talk slightly different, but we're all we're all as, uh, what, whatever words, arrogant, confident. Yeah. Lovely. Passionate. Annoying. Annoying. <laughs> yeah. You know, daft. Yeah. But we're, we're not that, we just talk a bit different. We're only 29 miles apart. Yeah. Aren't we? uh, what's, uh, what's up next, future-wise? Have we got another album? Coming well, up or anything that we need to talk we'll about? we just chock a block at the minute and um, I'm going to enjoy this and, um, you know, crack on really. I want to go and smash it. Any other collaborations? Uh, at the moment, um, no. No. Not. Have you got a wish list of people that you'd like to work with? Um, like if somebody said, no, no the al- this album's, you've done it now, it's finished. Yeah. You've got a bit of time in your hands. Who would you like, three artists that you'd like to work with? One, I've always loved uh, Jack White. Yeah, I'd like to just like do something really quick with them and record it as like a sort of vibe thing. Yeah, and then something completely out of the uh, bracket is there's a new dance act from Liverpool called Camel Fat. All right, I don't know if you've heard of them, but we covered their song called Panic Room uh, on a Rage All Wellness session a few weeks ago, and I, and I liked it, and I've been chatting to the to the fellas. Who and who who do that or whatever? And uh, I'd like to try something weirdly with them, just as like yeah, maybe yeah. a one off as a just to expect. Like I'm not a big dance head on dance music, but with what they do, I uh, I can appreciate it and I, I quite like it. Yeah, I I actually I don't quite I do like it, you know. Yeah. Um. So I'd like to do that because that's something modern and and sort of as in uh, as in now. Yeah. And then. Um, one more now. I don't know, me and you, man. Yeah, hey, come there on now, let's do it. I'll there you go. Come on. Come on. Never ask. <laughs> I'm in a rush. I'm desperate. There right? you go. Yeah. <laughs> we should do something. Yeah. Um, right, listen, it's been brilliant seeing you, and you're looking great, man. You're uh, you're, you're a proper good role model for uh, us mods. Thank you. Do you see yourself as a mod? Yes. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Good man. Good man. Mo- I think it's equal parts mod, punk and hippie, actually. I think that's the way I look at how, how we <laughs> yeah. are, you know what I mean? Yeah. But, uh, yeah, loads of love to you. Keep up the great work. Well done on the new album and uh, have an amazing Thank tour. Thank you, brother. Miles See you soon. soon. See you soon, brother. Nice. Lovely.